Hey guys, welcome to the video. I'm the Buying King and today I'm very pleased to say that I am joined by none other than the amazing CEO at Arkhamoto, Mark Frommeyer. Mark, how's it going, man? Uh, it's going well. It's going well. I'm actually on the road here in uh, uh, beautiful Southern California. So appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to chat. Amazing. Yeah, there's so much going on in the news about Arkhamoto, just like little bits of little things that you guys are dropping here and there. And I just have to ask you certain questions that people need to know the answers to. So let's start off by you just kind of telling us about yourself and the come up story of Arkhamoto. Wow, it's a big, uh, big question. So I'm, I'm actually, you know, uh, born and raised in Eugene, Oregon. I was a, originally a, a software developer. Um, so I, I grew up programming in Apple II uh, and got into game development very young. Um, ended up getting a degree in electrical engineering and computer science from Berkeley and then uh, developed games professionally for a number of years. Uh, first as, a, a, as, as part of a big AAA publisher and then um, uh, started a company with a few other guys called Garage Games. Uh, and we sold that in 2007. Uh, at which point I, I actually went looking, uh, you know, I, I, fresh off of the sale of a company, I went looking for a vehicle to buy. Um, and I couldn't buy, I couldn't find what I was looking for. I wanted, wanted an everyday uh, electric vehicle for uh, doing the kind of daily trips that we almost all do almost all the time. And uh, the, the market really had nothing. And I would say, uh, other than a few exceptions, including Arkhamoto, has nothing that is really well tuned to the daily transportation pattern. And that's really kind of what Arkhamoto is all about is, is the right sizing of mobility in order to really reimagine the city. Great. Yeah. It's kind of finding like that mix between a bicycle and a car, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it, it and that was, that was the, really the aha that got Arkhamoto started in the first place was I went to a parade and saw a three-wheeled kit vehicle. This is in 2007. And it was like, you know, wow, there is a giant empty space in between the bike and the car. Um, and that it, it really struck me that with the right, really the right new vehicle platform architecture that we could, uh, that, that we could build a product that was much closer to the bike in terms of efficiency, fun factor, uh, maneuverability in traffic, ease of parking, and yet had a lot of the capabilities that you, you actually need for everyday tra transport. Um, and so that's that, you know, it's, it's that, it's that gap that the sort of bicycle plus to car minus that we really see as, as the giant opportunity in the future of transportation. Right. That FUV isn't something that a consumer really thinks of, but once it's presented to them, it's like, wow, why, how have we not had this already? It's, it's that's, a, that's what I like about it. That's a kind of a common reaction that we get it. It, you know, and I would say the other thing is it, the FUV typically um, over delivers in terms of people's expectations of it. Uh, so, um, which I think is a good thing uh, generally, which is that people drive it and they said, you know, typically out and say, wow, that was just a ton of fun, very exhilarating, very freeing sensation. Um, but once you actually start using it on a regular basis, you realize just how practical it is. Yeah, I wish I could get my butt in that seat, but I'm over here in Colorado and I haven't been on the West Coast in a minute. So yeah, even though I was born over there. Well, soon, uh, soon we'll have vehicles out there. We'll, we'll, Great. We'll, we'll bring them to you. Sweet. So before I get into the questions portion, I just want to talk about how I was introduced to Arkhamoto. So I've been an investor in Arkhamoto since June of 2020. And that was because I saw a hyper change video pop up on my YouTube feed. And I saw it um, and I heard from Zach and Jesse on Now You Know about Arkhamoto a couple years ago. And I'm, I'm just like, OK, let's see what this video is about. It's a partnership between Arkhamoto and Sandy Monroe. And as I'm watching this video and I'm hearing Galileo Russell talking about the company, I'm thinking like, okay, they might be onto something here. I'm looking at the balance sheet. I'm seeing assets that are two times that of liabilities. And I'm just blown away by this balance sheet. And I'm thinking, how could this company that's a startup be doing so well? And then I hear in the video that Arkhamoto 
plans to, in a few years, produce 50,000 vehicles per year. And I'm thinking at the current price, $20,000 times 50,000 vehicles, we're looking at annual sales of a billion dollars. And the company has a market cap of less than 100 billion at the time, uh, less than 100 million at the time. And I'm thinking, holy cow, this company can 15x from here if it was trading at a conservative price to sales ratio of a 5x at 100 billion at $1 billion in sales. So I'm just, I got so excited that I made a TikTok video about this. Uh, my TikTok channel was already doing well, but the video really gained traction immediately. And as of today, it actually has around 100,000 views on it. Nice. And since then, yeah, I mean, people like the video. And since then, you know, the stock ran up from $3 a share to $36 a share in a matter of half a year. And people have been asking me, what do you think about Arkimoto? And also, um, when the stock went from $36 a share back down to $10 a share, people have been asking me this question. So, um, and it's just been great seeing the community around these investors that also follow Arkimoto, which I didn't tell anyone to buy Arkimoto. That's not what I'm here to do. But I just got so excited that I told them why I was buying Arkimoto. Well, so, glad to have your support. Yeah, it's been awesome following you guys. So you've been pretty busy in California. Uh, what are you up to over there? Uh, well, this, this is really my first uh, marketing roadshow since getting vaccinated. Um, and we, we got our, uh, our early part of our team got vaxxed in you know, beginning of April. Um, and so we're, uh, you know, we've been basically off the road uh, other than, than delivering vehicles and, and dealing with service issues and so on. But we really have not been in-person marketing uh, for almost the, you know, the last year and a couple months. We did a, a few trips um, in, in the middle of COVID in an uh, RV bubble. But other than that, you know, we've been doing almost all of our communications with customers have just been online. Um, and there is a, there's an, the experience of the vehicle is really actually a very critical part of the overall purchase process, uh, there uh, there there are few who will take a who, who will buy a buy a new motor vehicle without experiencing it first. And so uh, now that we are you know, the, the the team is largely vaccinated and we're we're seeing a, a return to uh, vacation travel, we think that now is a very good time to get back out on the road, open up new rental operations. Um, and, and really get butts in seats, to your point, uh, in order to, to drive the future growth of the business. Great. I think that's an awesome thing to do. Like I said, people have to see that FUV to really realize what they're missing out on. So Living the FUV life. It's a good time. FUV life. Yeah, I love it. Love it. So as an investor in FUV, you can't really open up any investment app without being bombarded by all these articles that keep popping up about lawsuits. Should investors be worried about these class action lawsuits and these reminders that keep popping up? So I, I can't really speak specifically to the lawsuits. Uh, we actually haven't been served yet, um, but I did speak at some length to the short seller, uh, you know, research report uh, that that prompted the uh, I think now five or six firms to deluge the FUV ticker with repeated press releases. Um, I, I think it's a pretty transparent uh, action in terms of what they're attempting to do. But, you know, it's just part of the reality of the market that we're living in. Sure. So I would, I would recommend anyone who is curious about those uh, to just watch our last earnings call uh, where I where I talked about it at some length. Yeah. I, I think that was a great thing for you to speak on that, the first item of the earnings call. Great. So I, I prepared a little bit of a slideshow for you, so I'll share my screen with you. All right. What do we got? Uh, okay. Let's see. You know. this, this is a no novel experience. Usually uh, I, I'm the one who gives the slideshows. Well, honestly, like 30 minutes before the call, I'm just like, oh, crap, I need to put something together. <laughs> okay, cool. Love is the font selection. Anything? Thank you is default. Domino's Arkimoto. What do we got going on? What's happening in this picture? People have been seeing this pop up. Um, I think it's pretty advanced for a design for it to just be something that someone just threw together. I think that's a that's reasonable speculation on your part. 
and that's all I can kind of hope for for an answer. I, 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 those are nice looking pictures of a vehicle out there. It does look nice. I'll oh. agree with you on that. Okay, that's fair. Great. This is not Franz <laughs> in the video, right? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I saw this video pop up and I'm just like, holy cow, this is huge for our Komodo. What's going on here? Fra Franz is uh, sli slightly less in shape um, uh, <laughs> body double. Uh, John Fries, who's a fantastic uh, member of our team. Um, so, so, yeah, actually, uh, I met up with, um, originally uh, met up with his wife, Vicky, uh, who is, um, has a very cool uh, vegan leather business that she is building um, that's part uh, part plant-based, part upcycled. Um, and they're using in a, a bunch of different uh, sort of next-gen sustainable products and got introduced to her uh, because of that and uh, the potential of using, potentially using that material for everything from seats to apparel items and so on. Uh, but yeah, Franz did actually come down uh, at the same time and had a chance to get behind the handlebars. Oh, great! But we don't have that on video or photos. No, I. Do she, have... she, she. Uh, this is. I think this is uh, Vicky who posted this video. But it was actually John who was driving the kids around. Wow! Great. Okay. Well, that's cool. Um, have you had any talks with Franz himself about? some sort of partnership with Tesla or some sort of partnership with just him as an independent contractor designing an FUV? I, uh, well, that would be a, that would be an, I, I, I would love to see the, the Franz uh, take on the Arkhamoto platform uh, as a, as sort of a, what, what would a Franz hat look like? Um, but, uh, you know, I do definitely see that, that, and I've talked about this before on a number of occasions that we see, you know, we really see the work that Tesla has done um, kind of across the board as being really world leading in terms of battery technology, AV technology, obviously getting vehicles out in extraordinary number in the electric vehicle space. And so I think uh, I, you know, we, we see the potential at Arkhamoto, uh, everything from utilizing the charging network to next generation battery cells, um, uh, you know, we're, we're definitely going through some of the same um, supplier, uh, uh, you know, early production issues um, with vehicles and, uh, you know, supplier quality, uh, our own quality issues and so on. So um, there, there are some similarities in the story where I think having uh, some form of a collaboration there would make obviously a lot of sense. Um, nothing that I can speak to at this point. Sure, that's fair. Great. So I did tune into the earnings call and I saw this slide about Platform One Endgame and I was just like, holy cow, that's a sick looking design and also the capabilities um, and the targets that you guys have for Platform One really blew me away as well. So is this sort of like a sleeker, sexier version of the FUV with a more focus, uh, higher focus on software? Yeah, so, so well, the, the forever, Ever since the beginning of Arkhamoto, the long-term vision has been really the same, which is a vehicle that is usable on demand, uh, that is incredibly efficient and solves everyday trips. And so that we really see Arkhamoto is kind of at the at the convergence point of future vehicle technologies and the the movement of the vehicle market, whether you're talking about electrification, uh, vehicle sharing, autonomy. And I think what's probably most important to us is, uh, is is really the platform itself. So something that is human scale, much lighter weight, much more efficient by design. Um, and this is this is actually not even a render. This is a sketch, uh, but it is it is intended to uh, evoke the direction that we're going uh, as we look out. Uh, once we are in mass production, once we have. Uh, sort of this would be the, the fully embodied concept of, of an Arkhamoto platform vehicle and one that you could summon from the touch of a button on your phone, you get out and it goes off on its merry way. Um, wow. And, and we think that there is, that, that the time frame for this is actually much closer than uh, 
the arrival of, of sort of full level five uh, robo taxi autonomy. Uh, the, the, the most important thing is that the autonomous or remote control system is able to get a vehicle to you. Uh, but the great part of the Arkimoto is actually driving it. So it's, a, it's an incredibly fun vehicle for you to drive. Um, and I look forward to the day when all the other big vehicles out there are driven by robots. So, you know, if you need to get in the lane, you just kind of nudge over and they get out of the way and then you move along your merry way. Yeah, right on. Well, my next question was, what, will we... I, I was going to say, it's that yeah. element that will, that will dramatically reduce the cost of shared vehicles uh, and will um, open up that opportunity to a, a much wider portion of the, of the traveling market. Great. I think that's a brilliant direction for Arkimoto to be going and that you guys have an end game. Uh, because so many manufacturers out there are just like, yeah, whatever, electric vehicles, let's pump one out and don't even have a focus on software. My next question was going to be, will we ever see an FUV that unlocks and starts with the push of a button on your phone and also has over the air updates that enhance the performance? But you already yeah, answered we, that. We built the hardware in to do over the air updates into the vehicles. Uh, they will require a software update in order to enable over the air updates. So there will be one final pass through all the vehicles that we've built to get that system up and running, at which point uh, a, a lot of this, any of the service issues that are software based will be able to do over the air. Great. And could we expect that the, the keyhole will be replaced by just having your phone with you? Uh, that, that's going to be one, one option on the table. Uh, okay. And some, some customers may want a key card. Others may want, to, to use the phone alone uh, or to use a pin code on the screen. We're going to have a few different options. That's really exciting to hear. That's awesome. Very Tesla-esque. Okay. Um, what level of autonomy can we expect to see from an Arkimoto? Will we ever see level five where it drives itself? Uh, we, we will. So, so at some point down the road, we expect that every vehicle is going to have full autonomy. Uh, whether what, what the time frame on that is is still TBD, but the, in the in the much nearer term, um, and I've mentioned in the call that we expect to demonstrate autonomy this year as one of our goals, uh, and to actually have it in it. If you see this slide, um, the tar target is a three-year time horizon to have a meaningful deployment of the of this concept, this personal mobility, personal mass transit concept. So, so that yeah. would be that that will be, um, I, you know, something in the in the level three plus realm. Uh, but what, what's when you think about the, the the real aha here is that if you have a vehicle that is empty, that's not carrying anybody, you can. It is a much lower bar to pass than the level five robo taxi in terms of what the vehicle needs to do. It can stay on lower speed streets as it's coming to you. It can, uh, if, it, if it runs into a problem that it can't figure out, it can throw on the hazards and pull over, uh, waiting for a, for a remote control operator to take it over and get it back to where it needs to go. All things that would be a horrible user experience if you had humans in the vehicle really won't be anywhere near as much of a problem if they are being if, if the main function of the autonomous drive is just to get the vehicle to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that. That's very true. Great. But so that's, that's, where, that's where the real, if, if you look at the, the main arguments for the robo taxi fleet, it's, you know, one, you get, you're leveraging shared assets Two, you get a, a vehicle that drives itself perfectly well, um, which is a very, you know, it's a very significant feature uh, particularly if you have people who are unable to drive for some reason. Uh, but the, the other major advantage is that you have a, a significant cost reduction because you're not paying somebody to drive you where you need to go. Um, and you're not spending all the time that you personally to go to your vehicle uh, or to find parking for it or whatever. So that's where we see the, the, the real opportunity, particularly for this platform. Absolutely. That's awesome to hear. And I can't wait to see what you guys draft up there. 
So this next part of the call, I actually prepared a little animation for you. Whoa. I don't know if you remember. It's very simple. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but when I first started looking at Arkimoto and I first joined the Facebook group, um, I kind of like sketched up a little design of what I would want the FUV to look like. Very controversial. I don't know. I don't know if you remember that or whatever, but I'm Vaguely. About to... Vaguely. Okay. Well, you do a little bit. So yep. I'm just kind of going to show you what I've drafted up recently. And nobody's opinion is better to get than the CEO himself. All right. Whoa. Crazy, right? I know. Crazy it's keynote cool. stuff. Keynote stuff, man. Right. So this is kind of what I've drafted up. I kind of call it like this the sketch, the stingray, just because uh, that's kind of what the design reminds me of. Um, what this is basically is just like a hood that covers the whole front end of the vehicle. Um, there, I'm a huge design guy and I couldn't help but meddle with the design just because I, I'm such a huge fan of the Arkimoto. So what this is, is basically it just makes the front of the vehicle more sleek and smooth and more uniform. And I took the headlights and the turn signals and I uh, put it into one unit here, as you can kind of see in the design. And I know a whole lot of the current design of the Arca motor right now is around it being technically a motorcycle. So I don't know if any of this is actually possible or if you guys are even considering going down this road or whatever, but I just wanted to present you this design. Well, I, I appreciate you uh, offering your design concept. Uh, one thing I notice here is you've got some large rear view mirrors. We'd actually like to get rid of the, the rear view mirrors entirely and go with cameras. Um, oh, wow. So okay. that's, that's one, one piece that, uh, that, that we're looking at for, for a subsequent iteration. Um, and then in terms of the, the, the sort of the fully covered wheels, that, that could be an option on the table. The, one aspect that I really like when I'm driving the Arkimoto is that I can see exactly where my wheels are relative to the, the areas I'm trying to get through. And particularly in very dense urban areas, you can get through any, anywhere where you can see your wheels fitting, you know that you can get through the gap. Um, and that's what makes it a very maneuverable vehicle in, in dense urban environments. You save a ton of time in traffic because you can kind of make your way uh, through the mess much better than, than any of the other cars can. Um, yeah. And my, I, my I had heard you talk about that before. Yeah. My, my only concern with doing the fully shrouded uh, front is that it will, it will make it uh, more challenging to really see exactly where you are on the road. Uh, but that's, there are some other advantages that come with doing that as well. Yeah, I, I'm not an engineer or anything, but I could see this maybe being a more aerodynamic design. There's people that are saying that the Arkimoto definitely isn't aerodynamic by any means, but should it really even matter, you know? Um, but I took I took um, kind of influence from the Tesla Roadster, the Corvette Stingray, obviously, and the name of the sketch, and also Aptera. I kind of like what they're doing with the front of, of the vehicle. It's very sleek. It's uh, They claim that they're the most aerodynamic vehicle, prototype vehicle on the road. So yep. that's just kind of what I drafted up, and I wanted to get I it in front of your eyes. Been, been a long-time fan of Aptera. Really? Have you oh, yeah. guys okay. talked at all? It's a pretty, it's a pretty it's a very different product than what we're building. It's, it is for sure. It is a, a, a full sized vehicle. Um, but they they have the same really, I think unflinching focus on efficiency that Arkimoto does. Um, and I think it's going to be a really a, a great ride. Wow. That's cool to hear. I don't know if you've mentioned Aptera in an interview before, or I haven't seen uh, it. But. I, I've definitely talked about, I've, I've met both of their founders, years ago um, and you know heard the uh, some of the challenges that, that they went through on the first round and I think that they've I, I really uh, admire their tenacity and and picking up the ball again and and actually making it happen great okay next slide regarding production and 
ramping up to mass production. So would it save Arkamoto any time? By the way, I love the color schemes that some people post on the Facebook group of their FUV. I, I love them. They're amazing. Would it save Arkamoto any time to lessen the amount of customization colors that they can do for paintings? Uh, as you see, Tesla only has a few amount of painting that they do. They don't uh, really give you, you know, trim, accents, whatever. Would it, would it make sense for Arkamoto to go down that path? Well, we don't actually do any of our own paint in house. So we, uh, we, we basically shop that out to custom, uh, to a custom motorcycle painting shop. Uh, and they do a, a huge range of very interesting custom paint work. It all, all that we do in house is that in terms of color colorways is a base color of the body panel. Right now we have two, there's black and gray. Uh, we will likely be adding a third here soon. And then a bunch of different vinyl options that you can use to accent the, the, the base vehicle uh, body panels. So when it okay. comes to custom paint, I don't think that that's going to, that wouldn't be a substantial improvement for us in terms of simplification. Uh, since paint really is, we're not intending to bring paint in uh, in-house ever. Okay. Okay. So are you worried that Arkamoto may skew itself? It's kind of a play on words for screw itself. Uh, you guys have so many iterations of the, the skateboard, if you will, of the Arkamoto. You got the FUV, Deliberator, Rapid Responder. Now you got the Roadster. Uh, you guys have announced a new flatbed Arkamoto, but there's also the Cameo. Are, is, is there too much for you guys to keep up with demand right now? Uh, I, so so you're, you're, you're talking about in terms of just all the different variants on the platform? being yeah uh, is yeah uh to me now is really the important time to be going to to be fleshing out all of those different platform variants so that as and and they weren't all thought of prior to launching production of the fun utility vehicle so some of the variants are very prototype right like we we had some of them on the drawing board uh, earlier on, but as we go to scale production, we want to make sure that the platform is really well architected to be able to accept all of the different variants very easily. And so that's why we're doing it now, is that we want to make sure that we have really figured out the full range of options that we'll want customers to be able to have when we're at scale. And a lot of that's coming from requests from our customers or from, uh, from potential pilot customers who are saying, oh, okay, you know, your, your current deliverator, I, I, I want to use it for um, doing uh, site maintenance. And so it needs to be carry, able to carry large yard tools. And that's really kind of what the flatbed came about as a result of was feedback from a pilot customer saying, you know, what would be really great is if there were a flatbed option. Um, and oh. it turned out that the flatbed had actually already been on, I mean, we'd done early, early renders of that, uh, years ago, but that was what prompted us to actually build the prototype and get it into, get it into service. Interesting. Okay, great. Yeah, that's a great answer. And I mean, I look at all of these different variants and I see a, a clear use case for them. Yep. So there's rumors about an Apple car going around. And a lot of people think that this might be a sedan or some sort of coupe, but I'm actually looking at these little rumors that are coming out. As you see this headline here, it says these autonomous electric vehicles are designed to operate without a driver and focused on the last mile. And when I see that last sentence about focused on the last mile, I'm starting to think, wow, that's right down Arkhamoto's alley, especially with the deliberator. Could this cut into Arkhamoto's market share here? And are you guys, at all concerned about Apple's future plans for the Apple car? Um, I think that there is a pressing global problem to move towards a sustainable transportation system. And we welcome everyone who, who wants to actually make meaningful work on that problem. Uh, our goal is to be uh, a step ahead in terms of driving 
lightweight, human scale, ultra efficient products into the marketplace. Uh, and, you know, to the extent that, that uh, Apple or anyone else is interested in, in moving in that direction, we think that that's a generally a good thing for the planet. Sweet. Okay, great. Um, I have a couple more share, uh, questions to share with you, but that was the end of my slideshow. So you guys are clearly right now in a state of high growth. Do you ever plan to pay a dividend? Uh, any, any, all, sure. any, any profits in the, in the foreseeable future, foreseeable time horizon, will go back into the growth of the company. Uh, yeah, at some point, you know, ask me again in 2030. Yeah, I, that's what I'm thinking. So I did outsource some of these questions to my uh, followers, and that's one of the questions they had. When will you guys be delivering to Colorado? Because I am so antsy to get into one of these Arcimotos and just have one for myself. I live in a small town. The FUV would be perfect for me. Well, uh, we, we have not yet announced our, our next states that we're going to open, but stay tuned. Okay, great. And one last question. You and everybody else at Arkamoto are very secretive about what you guys do. And I almost thought I'm going to get an answer here, but is there any news that you would like to share today? Something that isn't already public knowledge? Well, it, it, the, the thing is, as a, as a public company, we can't actually, uh, anything that we share with, with one, we've got to share with all. And so that's why our primary channels of communication are things like earnings calls, press releases, um, and, and reg FDs and so on. So no, I, I don't have anything that is material information that is, is not yet public that I can share with you at this point. I'm I hope very impressed. A little bit of color on, on, on where we're aiming to go. I mean, I think you were, you had some pretty astute pickups on, on, uh, on the end game slide. So, uh, th that to me is, and if you, I mean, you can go all the way back to the, TED talk I gave in 2012, it's, we've been telling the same story um, it, in terms of where we're aim, and aiming to go. We're just now finally within striking distance of, of being able to get there. Wow, that's exciting. Great, Mark. I'm, I'm impressed with your composure and your professionalism as a CEO, as someone that's leading this company. I don't know how you contain all that and keep things a secret so well. I mean, I guess that's your job but I'm just so fired up about the direction that Arkhamoto is going. And by the way, congratulations on getting Galileo Russell on your board of directors. I think that's such a huge move. I've been watching him for the past couple of years now. And the things that come out of that guy's head are just crazy. And, and I think it's great that um, you guys got him on there. Yeah. You no, know, Galley's uh, he's, he's been a, a really awesome contributor well before he was on the board in terms of great ideas and, and, good partnership concepts and, and just general enthusiasm. And so he's, a, I think, a, a real asset to the company. Great. Well, Mark, thank you for taking out this time in your very busy day. I can't wait to see what else you guys do over there in California and what Arkhamoto has going forward in the near future. I'm super excited. So thank you for taking this time. And uh, yeah. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. Take care. Great. You too.